just me. Nah, just for a little while. They'll join me later. Going to say hi. Um, today, well, I'm, yep, no, it's exactly six o'clock now. Today, I am near the blacksmith. That is the blacksmith. He will be coming by later, by the way. And this is the boathouse. It's meant to house big Viking boats or for them to be made. But right now, it is a souvenir shop and storage. But you can see the entryway, the old entryway into the village. We have a new one now as of two years ago. And here is where we play the game Knucked Like Kid, a big field. Um, I guess it's a bit like Viking Quidditch. You get like these bats and you um, like paddles and you hit this little leather or wool ball around. Uh, you're separated into two teams. Obviously, you want to get it through your post. I don't know if you can see the other one way down there. Right there. Um, and the rules are there are no rules. There are Russians like this game. Uh, <laughs> so we had to make a new rule that said um, no headshots. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that well down there. This white rock is what comes from these mountains up here. It's Anthorosit. Uh, if I'm saying that correctly in English, that's another Anthorosite. I don't know. Anyway, but it's very white. And it looks like this. And it's super sharp. Right now they're a bit grounded out from uh, being in the Viking village. But they are known for destroying Viking shoes. Are you coming to play with me? Okay, because I just got a message from Greg. He didn't look at the time, so he hasn't even left yet. He's not going to make it. Kill Greg. <laughs> but Carl's here for a few minutes. Carl's got a job to do later, so he won't be able to stay for the whole time. You want to sit with me? Pull up some reindeer. Hello. So I haven't even said hello to everybody or who's here yet, but since you're on limited time, do you want to tell them about the wonderful movie we watched called Viking Legacy from 2016 found on YouTube? Uh, I don't know. If it's a student film, it's probably a possible grade. It's not an early start. The um, we, we changed our clocks now. We should be back to normal. I started one minute early. Okay, continue. Well, if it's a student film, it's probably a possible grade. Uh, some of the swords are time appropriate. Uh, I don't know exactly where or when this is supposed to take place. Mm -hmm. Nobody can fight worth the dam. Uh, oh, come on, that was some seriously good uh, sword fighting on that one guy particularly who... Uh... No, they do the 1930s thing with uh, crossing blades and then pressing. <laughs> and yeah, no. Uh, and then obviously, a uh, sword fight is a very good place to have a debate with your opponent while you are pressing your blades together and screaming. Hmm. Yeah, no. Oof. Do you want to demonstrate what happened to the one guy? I'll be the victim. Grr. What? Berg. what did you do with that one guy? You got the awesome move. He just cut through his shoulder and down to his hip about. And then? Uh, it split very nicely. There was uh, very little blood. Just went. Even <laughs> decapitations are mostly bloodless. Mm -hmm. So. But there was a grueling throat cut scene that was... They yeah. spent a lot of time showing that. But that also was mostly bloodless. How about um, the monk who got burned? He dumps the thing of uh, oil yeah. on his head and then lights it on fire. Yeah, and he tried to commit suicide, but all he did was to draw a lot of attention. So he's later decapitated. But his hair remained untouched yep. by fire. Hmm. Um, the horseback riding. I probably had a horse for a couple of hours. And then they shoot a few scenes with the horse. Then the next day, when they don't have the horse anymore, that occurs to them that, oh, we need more horse scenes. So they have a lot of scenes where people are going. Just, they're doing it in unison, though. That's pretty good. Mm. That must have taken some choreography. Yes. 
I've never seen a movie that uh, lacked that had this much problem with horse lack of horses. No, I think it was in two shots. Three horses in a total of maybe two shots. One where he smacks them on the ass because they're pretending to have just gotten off the horse. Uh, we were laughing and snickering because uh, <laughs> we just see people's uh, people from about here and up, mm -hmm. and they are moving like <laughs> this. So they're obviously supposed <laughs> to be riding, and we are going, oh, God, they don't have a horse. No. It's almost Monty Python levels on this. But then later on, you can actually see a horse in some scenes. So I think it is they didn't shoot all the scenes they needed the horse for at the same time. And then they didn't have the horse anymore. So Peruta points out, yes, it's hilarious. How did they manage to keep the straight faces? Jeez, I don't know. <laughs> they were in love with green screen. Almost yes. everything had a green screen background and it's always like sky as they're, you know. <laughs> 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 but they're not super good actors either, so I don't know if we would notice much of a difference. But they okay, so two movies ago we watched um, Viking with the one with Vladimir Putin. What was that one called again? Eric the Viking? Eric the Conqueror. Eric the Conqueror with Vladimir Putin. Not the real one, but ooh, good ringer for it. Last week we watched, uh, or the week before last, we watched um, Viking Saga, the Viking women and their flat pack ship. Oh, God. Starring Don Draper from Mad Men. <laughs> and this week, we have a Jedi. <laughs> it's a battle one with a braid. <laughs> so Greg is going to be really sorry he missed it. If you don't know which movie I'm talking about, I did put it in the description. You can search Viking Legacy on YouTube. Uh, it's. Uh, I hope you're right and it's a student production, though. Because then, I got to say, they did pretty good with a budget of nothing. Um, but it's... Mm -hmm. What about the nun? Oh, the... <laughs> <coughs> the nun, yeah. <laughs> now, her character is probably the most naive and idiotic person ever captured on tape. Mm. Uh, she has... Uh, Nobody gives people the information they need. People just follow each other around because they said they are friends. And then they all of a sudden find themselves in an arranged marriage <laughs> with the guy they are destined to marry, except he doesn't have the tattoos he is supposed to have and the nun hasn't bothered to check. Oh, but she had to believe the nun because the nun said your father would be proud of you. Yes, this is what your parents would have wanted for you. Yeah, no. mm -hmm. The nun was... Uh, there was absolutely no difference between the nun and the Vikings in a straight up fight. Uh, she is just as bad as them, so she usually wins. Yeah. Um, um, Lira writes, uh, the nuns need a good, right, a right good spanking. Would you like to spank the nun, Carl? <laughs> I'm going to get hit. <laughs> These aren't sharp, just so you know. <laughs> it's quite dull. Don't think I need them to spank you. We'll talk later. So why are your axes dull, Carl? Because um, you are Freeman responsible and you can't get me Freeman as quickly as I can kill them. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else about the movie? It was 2016 though. I'm kind of impressed with that. Yeah. No, they show some talent for special effects. They show oh, it was Elf, sorry. very little acting skills, and I really need a horse. Mm. Seriously, these people should buy a horse. Lisbeth. Yeah. Uh, and they um, mumble. Oh, yeah. They're speaking English. I think it might be slightly Irish dialect, but it's hard to tell. But they're, it's not that I can't understand their English, but they mumble it. And if you crank it up so you can hear, then the music is... But... And, uh, text... I swear to God, some of that was in a foreign language until I played it five more times and I realized she's actually speaking English. And the text of YouTube on YouTube was completely out of sync with the movie. I'm not even sure if it was the text from the right movie. I've actually doubted. Mm. So... Uh, by the way, um, Maria works as... Um, yeah, I will show you what I'm working on after when he's gone because he can't stay forever. He's on light duty today uh, because this won't last forever. <laughs> Maria says, have we seen Birkebeiner? And that one is actually going to be on our list. 
It's in on it's on the list. Yeah, yeah but since Greg hasn't been able to keep up, it's in Norwegian. Uh Birke Beiner. It's in Norwegian, isn't it? It's a Norwegian movie, but I think it's just I think it's actually in Norwegian. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, um, but that one we'll watch and then we don't have to worry about Greg catching up with subtitles or anything. So maybe we should I wasn't gonna watch that one this week. This might be a sign that Yep, I think you have to go because I hear the children or the offspring of Roger is here, so he has to go. Bye. <laughs> so now I can show you what I'm working on, but first I'll catch up with chat because I've been ignoring you. Um Charlotte's here from Bergen and Susan Youngman in the Adirondacks and Raymond Romber is here showing off his beautiful weather. It is, as you can see, no hood today. I don't even need this really. So it's oh, this is a look. <laughs> so um we can keep it up for a little while. It's about 45 today, and it is 6, 8, 12, 6, 11, it just turned in the evening, p.m. Uh, we did turn our clocks on Sunday pretty much the night after we were on, uh, the same night we were on last. And, oh, there's a lot of kids in the town. Okay, anyway, uh, Viking kids. Uh, so we changed from clocks back, so now we're pretty much on this time, wherever you are. This is the time we're on now until the fall. So I'm happy to say that we've got more light. Uh, so there's no excuse for us not to be outside for the next, until fall. So view, I'm glad you can see it though. There's actually, it does wash out a bit. If I get my head out of shot, you might be able to see it a little better. When I tilt, see there how high it goes up? Some of it gets capped off by clouds, but that's actually snow. So it goes to about there. And then you can see way up. And I can see if I can show you Shell Fossen. There. The really big waterfalls are up there. And someday I'll sit somewhere where you get a better view of that. And then you can see. We have some Vikings in the village. But they're going to be installing lights, so I want to be out of their way. Because uh, uh, And that missing wall you didn't see. We had a really bad uh, windstorm about a couple weeks ago, and it took out the walls, so they're being repaired now, too. Okay, anyway. So 22 degrees for Raymond. Celsius, that's uh, like summer. That's a really hot day in Gudvangen. Uh, Charlotte looks like she's having the same weather as me and happy Easter, by the way. As far as we know, Ostra has, Ostra, Ostra has absolutely nothing to do with the Viking Age. I was going to have Greg tell you a little bit about it because it is, seems to be an Anglo-Germanic thing. So it's more where he comes from, but we don't actually have that here. Um, we don't celebrate Ostera as far as I know, or Ostara, however you say it. Uh, we don't know of any ties of Easter to the Viking Age, with the exception of maybe they're starting to celebrate the coming of grass and more lights, and it could be a, a pagan type thing. But as far as we know, there's no official thing. So I've been told to Carl by Carl that I have to get that right. I was hoping Greg would be here to tell the um, English or uh, Anglo version of it, but we'll just spank him and make him suffer for it later, because I'm not a nice person. Uh, eight degrees where Peruta is in Russia. Uh, so she's a little colder. So Heidi Lisa is here. Happy Easter. Heidi Lisa made Runa a really cool egg. It's on her Instagram. It's a uh, horn tensory turned log. You have to, uh, or it's on Runa's Instagram too, I think. She can link that in there, but you should see it. It's a rock carving. Hey, Rogan. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so now you know that I'm actually not early. Well, if you're going to walk by, I have to show you off. This is a Viking in civilian clothes. Yeah. Hello. Oh, avalanche. I don't know if you can see it because it's uh Nope, I can't see it, but I can hear it. Well, Roger just got beat by an avalanche. Oh, we haven't opened yet, so we're doing maintenance still in the village. Getting ready. Till Norway says we can open up again. Mm. Uh, I forgot what I was talking about, but it was probably super important. Anyway, so I'll keep reading chat. Uh no, they didn't just bang the coconuts together, Raymond. That would have been such a fun little Monty Python swing of things. 
they were slightly better than that <laughs> in that movie. But oh my God, you should check those out. I will tell you, which I keep getting stuck on my boobs. This is, uh, do you ever have that problem? These boobs. <laughs> uh, let's see. So Maria's here too. She made it for the, we haven't seen much of her in a while, but that's because there's been a crashing schedule. Uh, a lot of good stuff seems to be going on at the same time. But I get to watch them back later. Like Mary Passanen's thing was definitely worth seeing. Um, the nuns need a good spanking. All right, good spanking. Uh, yeah, Elf is Elizabeth, if I understand, or Elizabeth, if I remember correctly. I was missing her. I was mixing up with Lyra of Spinning Winds, which is Ashley. She's getting her vaccination, so go, Ashley. Uh, I have not gotten mine yet. I am last on the receiving list due to age group, and I'm not high risk. Uh, but my uh, former father-in-law is getting his today, and he, no, Monday. And then he, uh, no, Tuesday, we have so many red days. Uh, actually, it's not a proper day until Tuesday. He gets his on Tuesday, and then he gets the next one six weeks later. Uh, Robin Woodman is here. Good morning from California. Robin, we miss you in the village. You guys have to come back. We have a house for you. Uh, yeah, no, 45 is just fine. Uh, we do have Freeman in the village uh, for the first time this season. They came... Uh, some showed up on the 31st and they left yesterday and the other ones are here now until uh, the end of March. I mean, until um, the end of Easter, which is 6th, I think, 6th or 5th of April. He did say it was a little chilly, um, but he managed to get through it. But the house he is in has a bit more of a um, space between the woods. So it could have, if it's not packed in tight enough, then we are expected to have one more good chill. Uh, when we're good freeze before spring is actually here. So this is false. Uh, this is the time of year where Norwegians get sunburned because they underestimate the power of the sun. And they start undressing a little too early because they think spring is here. And then we usually get like a week of, oh crap, that was stupid. <laughs> and we start all over again. I have not gotten a sunburn because I am a computer geek sometimes. And I don't go out. Uh, good morning, Arlene Cross. <laughs> Raymond, you don't have any boob sticking problems? Look, that I can show you properly. Hi, Alawan. There. It's these little things that keep getting stuck on. I can show you what those are in a minute so we don't run out of fun stuff to talk about. Um, yep, as soon as Norway says you can come, you're here. Good, good, good. If you want to be a free man, you can apply or check out hardarheimer.com. Um, and then uh, the email for it at Nardheimer. Okay, anyway, because the name of our village is actually Nardheimer, which um, is for Njord, the god Njord, and the village or the valley. Hello, Nell. She's preparing the traditional Karelian Easter treat called Pasha. Oh, I need to have some of that. First time, uh, oh, <laughs> no, so no stress there. <laughs> you can do it. I have faith in you. Uh, she'll see tomorrow if she actually has any luck with it. I'd love to see that. Uh, my kids know I can't cook, so there will be no turkey, but we will. Um, we were going to have an Easter egg hunt, but instead we're going to have an Easter rock hunt. I didn't bring one. I should have. We have rocks like these around the village, and we started painting little petroglyphs on them, and... Um, we did that last year and we're going to do it again this year. So there are four to six kids in the village this weekend and they will be hiding these. And if they find them, they get their Easter egg with candy in it. It's not an Easter basket like they have in the United States. It's just an egg that you can open up and have lots of candy in it. So that way, if they lose these and they don't find them all and they're stuck in the village, it's not a rotten colored Easter egg that has absolutely nothing to do with the Vikings. It's just a painting of a petroglyph on a rock. <laughs> so that's my plan there. Oh, Arlene Cross had snow. I kind of miss the snow. Uh, Pruda says, got bad news for everybody outside of Norway. I spoke to a lady who works for the Norwegian embassy here. She said the borders will probably not be open this year. Wow. That I haven't heard of yet. I just keep getting updates. I'm American, so I keep getting updates from the United States embassy that says you might want to think twice about coming here. You may get stuck in a hotel, or you may have flown all the way over here just to be denied and have to fly back immediately. So read up everything before you go. But as far as we know, the museums are still not allowed to be open. We are an experience, but we qualify in the museum category. 
Uh, so they're hoping that'll change shortly after Easter, but we don't know. Okay. Let's see. I think I caught up a little bit on chat. Prude is sending you some links. She's my little moderator, by the way, because when I type, it's really noisy. And uh, I tend to forget things and she remembers for me. And she can also tell you to behave. If you're misbehaving, she can kick you from chat. Okay, so this is what I did this week. You ready? My Easter egg is done. And um, it's not my favorite. I've got some other ones on Instagram that I like much more. It's kind of washed out in colors. But uh, I, for some reason, this maybe it's because this end of the thing here reminds me of my college colors. I went to the University of Minnesota Duluth with the um, Bulldog hockey team. Uh, not, I didn't play hockey, but this is their color. So every time I see this, I think a, a collegiate football or collegiate school. But the idea though is I'm burning my leftover yarn. Some of this yarn has been sitting in my closet for 25 years. I kid you not, this one. It's a failed plant dye job. <laughs> And it was breaking off in little pieces, but because these are knots, it won't really do anything in its decoration, so it won't get much wear. So this is what I did. There is actually a tutorial for this. If you look on my Instagram for about two years ago, I think I posted or one year ago. It's, uh, shall we make an Easter egg together <laughs> or something? And I, because I'm a snob and I wasn't happy with this one, but you know, everybody's got different tastes. This might be exactly somebody's favorite colors. Um, I have started another one. So instead of working on the blacksmith sweater, I'm working on another egg with Alafas Lupi, uh, which I really like. So this wool. The idea then is I'll keep using this light gray. Hi, hi. hi. Apple YouTube. Hi, Apple YouTube. Yeah, we'll just say hi. 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 Let me see hi for YouTube. Okay, ask a shift over. Hi. <laughs> this is what Hada. real. <laughs> okay, to some talk. Hada. <laughs> Those are two Viking kids in the civilian clothing. <laughs> but do also have for YouTube. Okay, go see hi. Mama, they come to our village, stolt. Ta da! <laughs> Hopefully, Marie won't kill me, the mother of two of those kids. <laughs> Oh, they're cute though and they dress up like Vikings when we're open. So the yarn that I was showing you, that's this one. Let Lopi. So this is thinner than the Olifos Lopi. Uh, I had that in here. This is the Olifos Lopi thickness and this is the Let Lopi thickness. So you see there's a difference there. I have been horrible on social media lately because we've got a project going here that's really excited and it's almost ready to go, which I can't wait to tell you about in a couple weeks. But I did see that there was somebody that had a yucalopi. Uh, yucalopi is even thicker than this one. And then there's another one that's even thinner than this one. So this is a yarn by Eastex. Um, I don't know if it actually says it on there. Yep. And Iceland. But you can get this one. I'm pretty sure you can get at least let lopi and alafas lopi in most places in most yarn snob stores in the United States, but they are online too. Uh, so this one, because it's thinner, I have to use a stitch like finish two plus two because there's more loops. But when I use the, uh, here's some, no, this one here. When I use this let lopi, then I can get away with just using also with my gauge. Uh, sometimes mom and so this one, because it's so thin, I didn't use finish two plus two. I thought I'd do that all the time, so I wanted to use something different. This is a variation of York, and I should have looked it up before I did, but it is just like finish two plus two done in the style of York, which means I'm working through, I have two loops on my thumb. I'm going behind two loops, um, and I'm connecting with two loops, but I'm going from the back and not from the front. I'll show you that. See how well it shows. I might have to tilt the camera a little bit. And find my last loop. So I have to connect F2. So one new one and one old one is what I'm connecting to. And then these top two loops here, instead of going this way, I am going that way on my thumb. 
And then I have two on my thumb, so on, so I go under those two and under the leader yarn and pull it through. If this was York, it'd be an extremely loose stitch. This is the back side, looks like that. And the front side looks like that. There's probably a name for it. If not, there's a symbol. Another way to do this is to make your connection. Okay, so let's see. F2, I'm going away. Uh, pull it through a little bit, but not all the way. And then you can actually count four loops back and go that way through. So one, two, three, four, and through to make sure you go under that. And then put it on your thumb. Are you back? Yeah. Good. I can needle bind. You can talk. I'm just giving him more needle binding than normal. I might have to run again, but that's I'm okay. Still it seems okay. Okay, so I revealed this wonderful. You have to see the description that I wrote on here. I don't know if you caught it today. I I did it elusively. I said, "Did Easter have anything to do with the Vikings? What do we think?" And then maybe Greg can tell us about Ostra. And did it actually have anything to do with the Vikings? But the correct answer is no, it did not. Well, it probably didn't. Uh, yeah. If it did, I would like to see the sources for that. Yeah, so if you know any. But uh, the only thing I could think of with Easter would be the sun change. No, it's not yes, Easter, but, but that's uh, a Christian thing. To the extent that I did anything, it wouldn't be. It would be uh, maybe uh, connected to the equinox. Uh, it would have uh, nothing to do with Exodus and nothing to do with the crucifixion, which is what Easter is, basically. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to have to uh, kiss Raymond over there. He, I told my head yarn that was 25 years old, this one. And he read, oh, since you were a little kid, I'm 48. I love you. <laughs> no. Anyway. Uh, and and Fruita says nobody's been behave, misbehaving thus far. Uh, Shalota says she's there with her family. They say hello as well. Hello. Is that a Arden Sikil? They were in Kusika. Okay, there's a very cool bicycle in the Viking Age, and it just went by. Again, we're not open <laughs> yet. <laughs> They're here to do maintenance to get ready. Does the plastic I use stay in the I guess it does. Uh, so it makes it a little tricky when closing it. This is the other one. There's candy in here normally for Easter, and you would just throw, there's like a wrapper that goes around it, and there's some candy in there, and then they just throw it away. But I wrote on Facebook in my city that I would like to collect these if instead of throwing them away. So people saved me some, and now I do that. But I will tape it shut, uh, because if it comes loose in there, you're not going to be able to get it shut again without catching yarn or something, because it is fully enclosed. It doesn't do anything but decoration. You could put some weight in there if you want to, or put some beads in there and make it rattle. Like my egg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But that's uh, that's how I do this one. Uh, the trick is you can start on this side or in this side, and you go as far as you can until you can barely get the thing over the egg anymore, and then you have to do some creative needle binding to try to get the stitches. Are you being summoned away? Or oh, I found a blacksmith. I don't know, but... Uh... Oh, and he's sporting a new hairdo, people. <laughs> it isn't quite as easy as it is in the book of Genesis. Okay, you tell me. You can't just say, let there be light, and there will be light. You have to point out where that light has to be, and you might have to make sure that Roger is within uh, herring range. So you're going to go play God? Yeah. Have okay. you come to cast a party on us? Yes, I have. Okay, I'm a little behind on chat, but I will catch up. But I'm gonna... And Carl turned into... Anders! Anders lives in that Val house. Valar Morgulis. <laughs> Show me what you got. Greg's not coming. He didn't watch the clock. Uh, so you are now, Greg. I'm an old man. So I have to make some noise. He's not an old man. Down. He's younger than me. Uh, <laughs> okay, show us what you got because you did something really cool. I can tilt the camera up or down, but oh, the, the kid on the bike in a Viking village, though. You can't buy that kind of entertainment. <laughs> Again, uh, we're not open. <laughs> here we go. Got some knaves. I have to show the coolest one first. Carl though. got suddenly a lot more handsome. I'm dating the wrong Viking. <laughs> no, you can't say it. Poor Carl. Come on. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a Skrama Sox. It's not polished and shiny yet. No. Why? It's, uh, just, it's a little bit crooked, actually. So I'm keeping this one for myself, which was the intentional at the time. But 
This is a S30V steel, which is like a special type of steel they did not have in the Viking Age, by the way. No? Uh, it's very, very hard. So I actually, when I stamped it, I don't know if you can see that, but it's yeah, a very can. slight indentation of my maker's mark. Uh, and if I compare it to, let's find a good example then. <laughs> yeah, oh, you got a hole. He's got, he's got candy. <clears throat> I got candy. <laughs> so let's say uh, I'll put it back up though so they can see so mountains. This one, for example, is a lot more there's a lot more indentation on it. It's difficult to see on this because I haven't steel brushed them yet. So these are uh, this one is spring steel, which is recycled from an old car coil spring. And this one is S thirty V. As is this one, because I got two out of that piece. And it's very, very robust hard steel, but it's also extremely difficult to uh, harden. So ideally, I should have had a hardening oven for this, but I guess my skill as a blacksmith are getting tested when it comes to, uh, <laughs> you know, because... Um, we like a challenge in this <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, it needs to be held at... Uh, I think it's 820 degrees, pretty exact, for about 8 to 10 minutes. And I think I did it, but we'll see. <laughs> so if it's not hardened, I will have to anneal it, which is to heat it up to critical temperature mm. above 700-something uh, degrees and uh, let it cool down in wood ashes or ideally in something called vermiculite which is uh, oh. like a volcanic rock that expands so it keeps the heat in yeah and it slowly this decreases the temperature over uh, 48 hours and then it's uh, soft as soft as it can be yeah which is uh, mar mark uh, markedly no <laughs> remark markedly markedly remarkably softer markedly. <laughs> than uh, it's I'm a native English speaker after uh, even hardening or even after just heating it up and yeah. Uh, forging it. So if you just leave it to normalize, as we call it, mm -hmm. then it cools down in room temperature, which uh, means that it uh, decreases the tension in the knife blade, which I also do uh, with all these knives. And mm -hmm. after hardening, first you you heat it up to yeah critical temperature, basically. Critical. Uh, critical. Critical. Uh, like Iceland. Something like <laughs> yeah, uh, seven hundred degrees. Uh, some some uh, knife steel requires more, some less, but these are usually at 720, 800 degrees. And you can see the golden tint on the top of it, like the on the end of the tang. This is because after I harden them, I put them in the uh, oven, like a kitchen oven, and uh, temper them on 200 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Ah, somebody can look. We can make five hundred something like that. Four or five. It's hot. Something <laughs> like that. Uh, it's like when you bake a pizza. Uh, pizza baking. <laughs> ah. Uh, and the thing is, the trick that I use, which I'm about to divulge to you and reveal a secret in <laughs> my trade. Um, when I harden it's the them. Poor cold blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's Regina. They're picking on me. It's the poor cold blacksmith because your sweater's not done yet. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we have a plan there. Continue, I'm continue. Cold, cold. <laughs> oh wait, he cut his hair. He's really cold now. Cold. Just I'm show really him your. Now, yeah. He's really cold now. Really cold. <laughs> so, uh, so this is okay. When you harden, uh, you heat heat it up to critical temperature. You plunge it into oil, and I just used my logic to find out about this, but it worked very well because uh, ordinarily you need to put the knife blades into boiling water uh, afterwards because you want to keep them warm until mm. you can actually temper them, unless you have a tempering oven in your um, in your uh, smithy, which I don't, uh, and I don't have an oven there either, so I had to find a way to kind of half temper them or temper them in the old way, which I did. Mm. Um, I oil burn them because oil burning happens at approximately 200 degrees as well, uh, 200 uh, between 200 and 250. So first I oil burn them and that makes them look like this. And then I put them in the oven and it bakes completely. So when I put them in the oven, uh, I didn't wipe these clean uh, before, but uh, the oil is now oil burnt onto them because of the tempering process. 
So these are my new batch, and this is more of a classical Viking era type of knife shape. Yeah. More. Is than... that the one you're gonna make me when I actually finish your sweater? This might be so. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. And uh, I probably show didn't show. This is uh, gonna be something like this. This is very shiny though, and I was calling my girlfriend the other day and I thought to myself, I have a little bit of a three day beard going on here. So I actually, and uh, this was the other day, no, I was not today. Say, no, I no. actually shaved like today. like a baby's butt yeah. over there. <laughs> so I actually used this to shave uh, and it works quite well. Just put some soap on my face and uh, use this. <laughs> so it actually is extremely sharp. Uh, this is made from- Is that the apple? You can see if I can hold it correctly. You can see the line. No, not really. You, can't you can really also see try it. a different angle with the light. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the keyboard looks great on that. Yeah. Um, maybe the other side is better for this. Uh, it's difficult to see, but I haven't uh, oh, acid kinda... washed or I haven't put this in acid, so you can't see the what is called like uh, the line, the Hammond line, or. Uh, whatever it's uh, oh yeah that is really hard to see you'd almost have yeah, to have a black yeah. paper you to can see it. see it in real life because it's it's really you'll just have to come here and look, see it for yourself when you look yeah come here and see it for yourself <laughs> <laughs> uh there is a line uh, all along the blade which is the separation between the iron i put on the outside and the steel this is file steel that i put in the middle mm -hmm. uh which is very high carbon content but you use the uh, the uh mild steel or the iron on the outside to protect it while it's being heated up and it also like my other knife here i am not selling that because it has a crack in the middle of it uh you can see that quite clearly there uh, the crack mm -hmm. doesn't do any uh it's not detrimental to the use of the blade because the, um, it's going to keep together anyway but if the blade should crack in this now mm -hmm. uh the the iron on each side of the of the um uh, um what's it called blade uh, not the blade uh, the edge steel will hold together because of the iron on each side so it's pretty pretty cool mm. um and yeah I am very excited right now. Tell me why. Because I... Because you don't have a sweater? No, that's <laughs> not why. I'm not excited about that. I'm very sad about that, actually. So I have it with me. Tears are streaming down my face. I can't sleep at night. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going, I'm walking around in the house and I'm cold it's and so I'm, cold. I'm miserable. Please, please. No. Don't worry, it'll be done in time for summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a cold summer night. You know what? I'm not allowed to finish it now. We'd have no drama if I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What are you going to talk about when, the, when the sweater is done? By the way, Peruta, if you have Anders's Instagram, you can tag on there, by the way. And, um, oh, I have a sale on my Etsy, by the way. Oh, you have a so, sale on your Etsy? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's linked to your Instagram, so, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's so the they last can sale follow I will it. be conducting this year. So grab the chance now there and go. go there. It's Viking Blacksmith Shop. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she'll find it for you there. She's quick on keys. But um, one more thing. Were you, rumor has it you're thinking about doing YouTube. Yes, I am. Yeah. Eventually. Okay, finish I will, telling about that and then yeah, tell about yeah, that. I will do that. Okay. So uh, we are. <coughs> Hi. Drink your mic. And do you want to be on YouTube? <laughs> if you're going to be. Oh, no, that's there it. Are, so, you can't Vikings sit here and going. mock me. You have to be. On. He's trying hard to pretend he's not a Viking. Like, it's like. I, I'm a computer. Yeah, <laughs> it's a two and a warrior. <laughs> father of at least one of those rambunctious little non Viking children tearing through here on a modern bicycle. <laughs> one, of our, one of my friends who was in the military for a long open. time, he uh, he said that when he started working in an office, also in the military, he said he was a PowerPoint writer now. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was okay, in, in the cavalry. <laughs> you were trying to say something, and I interrupted with two over there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, so the thing is, I am very excited. Because yeah. I, uh, the other day, I just searched for, uh, for some reason I haven't done it yet, but yeah. until the other day, but I searched for hashtag blacksmithing <laughs> on you, on uh, Instagram. What'd you find? I found everything. The whole world opened up to me. <laughs> so you, have like, you not looked up the hashtags a lot before? Of us, there's a lot of blacksmiths Oh, there. there's a lot of importance so, in hashtags. And I came across this, uh, this site was um, selling 
chain links that weigh three pounds each yeah uh, and they are made from wrought iron and it's called lancashire iron which uh, has been produced in massive amounts in the 1800s yeah and there's a lot of ship chains and stuff uh, left from that era oh cool lying around and oh yeah we have crap loads in duluth well we have shipyards and exactly yeah. yeah so and uh the thing is this is so valuable because I have never, I, it's a shame to say, but I have never actually worked with wrought, wrought iron before. Oh! So, and it makes these wood kind of, uh, woodish grain patterns mm -hmm. in the knives. So I'm very excited because uh, this type of knife and uh, this, let's say this type of knife, mm. this will be when it, when you put that in acid after you have uh, put wrought iron on each side of the blade steel or the edge steel, uh, it's gonna look like a wooden structure, kind of. It's really, really awesome. So mm. I'm look very much looking forward f to that. Mm. So uh, yeah, well, that'll be cool. Um, now uh, tell me about the YouTube thing. By the way, we will have your knives in the shop too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. The web shop's getting closer, guys. Yes, definitely. So uh, yeah, look that up as well when you uh, when we open it up. But what uh, are you gonna do on YouTube now? I've only heard the rumor. Yeah, well, uh, I'm um, I'm going to make a uh, old-fashioned setup like Viking Age <laughs> uh, blacksmithing setup uh, with the historical forge. I'm currently making a second historical forge uh, so that I can work from two places in the village. Um, anyway, that's not the case, but uh, no? that's not the issue here. <laughs> but um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a setup of absolutely uh, historically accurate uh, Viking blacksmithing because I think the the name uh, Vi Viking blacksmith deserves like to Viking be binding, but Viking blacksmithing. Kinda, yeah, we need Viking kinda, leather working. We yeah, we have the yeah. holes. Oh, yeah, we plans. have the whole setup. <laughs> <laughs> so um, excited about that! It's gonna take me probably uh, over the summer to do this. So it's not yet, but it's coming. Yeah. But are you gonna do live, or are you gonna do uh, pre-recorded? I'm gonna do uh, pre-recorded in the first place, but yeah. sometimes I will probably go live after I have gotten a little bit of uh, I have get, to do used to it, kind of. So I have to do more pre-recording. Yeah, I'm horrible at that. Oh, well, I can teach you when I have some more experience with it. <laughs> when, when you have a sweater, <laughs> yeah. When I have when I have my sweater, I don't have I time for pre-recorded. I'm making a sweater. I won't help you before I have my sweater. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, Raymond says, uh, there's a whole bunch of comments in here to see, but uh, laugh out loud, the summer sweater, down, come down to Australia, it'll be winter by then. <laughs> if, you, if Australia lets anyone in their country, too, we're not the only one with stingy borders. Just so I, you know. I must say, I, I do better in the in the heat than I do in the cold, actually. I, I can manage cold pretty well because I'm, I've grown up in this country and uh, there are cold winters and stuff, but... Mm. Uh, I have to say, I was standing. I was. I went out of a bus on a trip to Egypt once. Oh, and uh, I would die. They and I, we were in the middle of Sahara. They stopped the bus in the middle of Sahara, and there was air conditioning on the bus and everything. I went out. Mm. I uh, was wearing just for the novelty. I was wearing like um, normal clothing that they wear in Egypt, mm. uh, which is like a what's it called again? It's like a. Not the kaftan, but it's like a robe kind of thing. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, cardigan. Yeah, maybe. it's very no. comfortable. To yeah, wear. Mm. and um, <laughs> I went out of the bus, standing in the sun, and there was a little wind coming, and I thought it was so cold. <laughs> so it's like in the middle of Sahara. Oh my god! So I guess I'm I'm just made for being a blacksmith basically because the heat does not bother me at all in the in. The I'm the other way around. I go crabby if it goes over. If I'm in 22 where uh, Raymond's at right now, I would be very pissy. Yeah. So <laughs> any invite to any warm country is welcome. You know, one where you need a sweater. <laughs> you know, especially yeah. forging in a warm country is very good. You know. Yeah. Hey, look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's got to go a little bit wider though yet. Yeah. But this one, it's a stretchy stitch, so it looks too small, but it actually. Cool. It's getting there. Okay. Should we read the comments? Because they probably got messages for you that I've been. Oh, uh, Heidi says, nice blade, Anders. Heidi Marie. Thank you. Yep. So I uh, have to put that in there. <laughs> The sexy sax, the sexy sax oh, you yeah. showed last sexy time sax. went to Mona, didn't it? Yeah, that yep. went to Mona. This is uh, larger than the last one. Mm. So this is uh, actually 33 centimeters blade length. So and uh, 40, 40 centimeters. 40 centimeters is approximately, how much is that? 
Uh, 40 centimeters? Divided by two and a half. Is that how the yeah. length you are now? Yeah, in inches. Oh, I have a... Computer. No, I mean, I actually had a measuring tape. Oh, okay. I think, unless I left it at the at home. I probably left it at home. No, but I think it's four centimeters is 10 inches, so... Yeah. Probably about 100 centimeters, a little bit more. By the way, your temperature is 392 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, how much he, is Joseph Kennedy says 392, and yeah, Prudy looks up 200 yeah, yeah, is yeah, about yeah. 400, so you're pretty close there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, Maria had to go for dinner, so we missed her, but I'm so glad she popped by. Uh, Drea from my hometown of Duluth says, isn't there a goddess named Easter? Easter, that was the goddess of fertility, which is why Christianity took its use of bunny and eggs. That's the myth. Myth, the question we don't actually know about that. That's the one I was hoping Greg would talk about because you're spelling it Easter, Y S T R. There's also Esther, I think, which is E S T R, and then there's Erstra, which is like O E S T R A. There's well, a bunch of different versions, but it's also very interesting. Thing, the, actually, yeah. yeah, the myth goes yeah. to the bunny thing, but we don't actually know. And we we're gonna have Greg well, look that up. Uh, the thing is, uh, Ostara is the yeah. origin for the word Easter, as far as I know. That's what they say uh, in Anglo, yeah, Anglo Germanic. That's, that's the, uh, Anglo, yeah, it's uh, not Scandinavian. Germanic but... uh, tradition. And, yeah. Uh, I, th I, it might be a co coincidence. I saw, uh, I saw a, um, um, a what's it called? A, a, a supposition? No, it's like when when two gods are placed next to each other and you see the likeness and the differences between them. Uh, some and stealing in the region, but uh, yeah, and we could compare, no, the same, yeah, it's a comparison, same level, le uh, it's a comparison, uh, picture mm -hmm. of uh, uh, e Egyptian and Indian gods, actually, it was a very interesting thing, and it's in the same kind of, I'm just mentioning it because, yeah, no, uh, go ahead. For, for the scrub, you know? <laughs> yeah, just for the chat, yeah, because yeah. we don't, uh, the big thing is, is that we don't actually know if it's true or not, but yeah. this is but, what. The, what but it's, it's it's likely that uh, some names are very similar, even though it doesn't really uh, have a connection. So uh, etymology doesn't work in the in the sound likeness way, kind of. Mm. So they, there might be a connection, and there might not. Um, but because I was watching this, and and a friend of mine showed it to me, and he said, "This must be true because it's like uh, this is a." Um, uh, it's so similar, and then, uh, funnily enough, I reacted to a god that was called Mahesh. In... I have a friend named Mahesh in Nepal. Do you? I, yeah. It could be him. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Mahesh uh, is a, and I misunderstood. This was very exciting. It's in my opinion. It's like <laughs> I, I was going to study uh, comparative religions. This is what old, Vikings do in their like, off time. Ancient religions. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the thing is, uh, so this is right up my alley in a way. Um, yeah. And I thought that he was mentioning the Indian god Mahesh, which is uh, uh, Shiva. Uh, it's the lord aspect of Shiva, basically. Yeah. It means the ruler in, okay. in Sanskrit. And, <clears throat> and the thing is, that wasn't the Indian name. No? That was the Egyptian name. Oops. So that, was, that is very interesting because that is literally the same name. Yeah. So that is very exciting. And um, I'm thinking that uh, Ostara is supposedly the origin for Easter, the word Easter. Supposedly, there, yeah. There might be, we don't know, because if there is a connection mm -hmm. between Egyptian and Indian gods, uh, there might also be a connection between mm. uh, um, Persian or um, Sumerian gods. Mm. Uh, uh, Persian, I mean, Persian slash Sumerian gods and yeah. uh, Anglo Saxon or Saxon gods. Mm. So you can never know because there were trade routes and we kind of imagine the world in the Viking Age, for example, we imagine it to be like very localized, a very, very small world, yeah. right? But there were trade routes already in the Bronze Age because the Bronze there are, there is no tin deposits in Norway. No. So you can't actually make tin and copper into bronze. So the whole Bronze Age in Norway is imported bronze, which makes bronze even more valuable really? in that age. Didn't yeah. know that. So, uh, <clears throat> so uh, if there is a Bronze Age find, like a bronze object in Norway, it's been imported from huh. somewhere, or it, they have imported the tin and made it into uh, bronze here. But uh, a lot of things were imported. I think glass was originally so, imported. So the world was yeah. a lot bigger at yeah. the time 
we, when we think that they were like wearing scrawling clothes like they called the uh, yeah. native americans when they ca came to uh newfoundland they called them scrawling scrawling would be like natives it, it means yeah. uh it literally means uh people who wear unprocessed leather so uh if you wear raw leather on your body then you're a scrawling that's what the name means or the the designation mean mm. so um uh i would say that um when you where was I? I lost my own <laughs> there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, you bronze Age, yeah, bronze, trade routes bronze. and stuff. <laughs> so when we imagine that they were uh, running around in unprocessed leather and kind of just oh I will kill a bear and then I will take his <laughs> fur and then just kind of scrape on it a little bit and then I will just wear it, which would make you a stiff uh, like a <laughs> like a bird <birds> scaring <laughs> yeah scarecrow, <laughs> but. Uh, this wasn't the case. They had quite sophisticated uh, fabrics, as I understand, and they had quite sophisticated ways of just the process of making iron. I have to say, I'm a chatterbox today. So. No, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so. Well, you know, you got one no-show, and the other one ends up having to do technical issues that wasn't planned. So. Yeah, so that's a lucky incident. I'm, I'm very glad you're here. Yeah, that's good. I'm not you're too freezing glad to be here because me. I'm really cold and stuff. So it's like really. Oh, but wait, no, look. I can make ah, it. No. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> temperature's dropping. So, um, okay, let me just tell you. Um, the definition of an Iron Age is not that you find an iron object in an area. And the Iron Age, you have to be understood that uh, the no, Iron Age is it. different from uh, area to area. So in the Sumerian region and in uh, the area of like Babylon, Iraq, today's Iraq, Iran, yeah, uh, it's a... Um, uh th they started uh, about i think it was 2500 bc yeah, YouTube. 2500 bc there's a bit of coming have two of those are mine and they unfortunately didn't get dressed up like vikings because they suck <laughs> but <laughs> the other two really did like <laughs> good kids over there <laughs> <laughs> so the iron age started i think uh, don't quote me on this but i think it was 2500 bc someone can probably google it but mm -hmm. um 2500 bc in Norway, it started 500 BC. So that is to say that by the time of the Viking Age, yeah, they had, uh, yeah, the definition, uh, I have to say that first. Mm. Uh, the definition of the Iron Age is if you, that you find evidence of the ability to mass produce carbon steel, not only iron. Yeah. So, and carbon steel is a, is a very different process. So let me just uh, repeat this process okay. which is like you need to know the things that i do with these knives to make this one from Hold it a little lower for you yeah sorry that's okay uh so from uh you may make uh something from a bog or from a meteorite or something into hardenable steel and making iron from from scratch is not that difficult but making steel from scratch is a very different process it's, it's the same process and i could do the whole story but that if someone requests the whole story i will do the whole story well but, we didn't get story time with greg so we get story time with I'm, you I'm, instead. I'm doing what i'm best at and uh, no, that is digressing okay. from uh, from i'm missing out on chat kind of, yeah, yeah heidi recognizes the kids i'm missing out on chat but that doesn't matter we can catch up on overtime yeah so so um <clears throat> thing is to make uh, iron and mm. uh, carbon into this, uh, mm. that they they had the ability to do that 500 BC in Norway. Yeah. So that means that by the time of the Viking Age, mm. we had experience with this type of stuff for 1300 years already. When the I was gonna say, yeah, Pruda has a comment there. Uh, modern archaeology evidence. Uh, mark, modern archaeological evidence identifies the start of large-scale iron production around 1200 BC. Yeah. Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. There's even, oh yeah, Baldur's, uh, I was going to say, I thought this was a bit about, uh, nope, okay, continue. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So, hmm. um, uh, so the, um, in which area are you looking at, by the way? Because uh, the Iron Age, uh, hmm. I have read that they started at least 2500 bc oh wow manola binding uh needle binding nola binding it gets older and older uh, as time goes on yeah and we have to find more and more um as do we we got Anne marie decker in there somewhere she's making comments too she is 
she rocks at finding the history nice, of this stuff. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Find out as much as you can and give me feedback on it because uh, I'm never uh, adamant at making claims no, because uh, making claims is uh, stupidity in my opinion. Well, and the evi evidence you, always you, changes. Because I don't have all the information. Yeah. If I had all the information, uh, nobody does. Nobody does. So, and it changes. It changes. And it changes so. as we find new evidence. And as far as Easter things. goes, as far as Easter goes, Carl would say, show me the sources. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and the sources can change too. Yeah. Suddenly one source is very credible and then you find out later, ah, Maybe that source wasn't so credible yeah. after all. It's so kind of like the incident of uh, it's always the, changing. the word Cheops or Khufu, the pyramid, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, just as a curiosity, I'm just mentioning. Yeah. Because um, the word Khufu is, is the sure. name of a king from a specific period in Egypt, right? Yeah. The thing is, the reason why they think this is attributed to Khufu or Cheops, yeah. the pyramid, is because... At some time during, I think it was around 1870 or something, there were some British archaeologists <clears throat> in there. Mm. One of his assistants went Ooh, above the tomb or the grave, uh, the square room where there is a uh, uh, sarcophagus. And mm -hmm. above that, there was an, like a charcoal inscription or something that was very, very uh, impromptu done. Yeah. And it was written uh, in hieroglyphs. This writing has a spelling error that is consistent with a spelling error that they only thought was the right spelling during that time. Oh, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. and I've heard that going <laughs> so before. It's, another, it's, it seems yeah. to be a forgery, which is yeah. like that's, that is not to say that the pyramids are like hundreds of thousands of years old or whatever they think it is. Uh, mm -hmm. These. Uh, other people that have conspiracy theories about it, I think it is way older than they think it is. Uh, but the thing is, uh, the fact that this word is written with the same typo mm. is, is very telling, in my opinion, because if you were a worker in mm -hmm. the pyramid and you would write the name of the literal god that rules you mm. and they would discover it, Mm. your life would be forfeit mm. so that's how uh, respectful they were to them so they wouldn't do that and second of all why would a scribe be on top of the chamber and just, ah, just gonna just in case i'm just gonna write this name <laughs> you know mm. so there are some things that we don't know about and there are many things that we discover eventually because they found out uh, how to correctly spell things mm -hmm. after this time so oh, but like norway there's many different ways to say and spell the same word yeah. Yeah. Or exactly. English has that too. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to zip back real quick and see if we had questions for you that we missed or something. Uh, because I got a little. Let's see. Uh, that was about where I went. There is water everywhere where uh, Elf is. She had a kitten emergency. Got drenched in the. She got drenched in the bathtub while her daughter was taking, walking, making a bath. My cats do that too. They'll start playing and all of a sudden, ding, right into the bathtub <laughs> and like literally in one motion. Woo! Water up and out in the same. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> it's quite cool when that happens. I'm sorry about the water mess in your house, by the way. <laughs> Take pictures. Uh, let's see. Live in the now. Carl's back for <laughs> two minutes to tell me that I've got to be on time today. So, but, uh, Arlene Cross is having Easter pizza because we can't get together. I think should we have Easter pizza, Carl? I think that's way better than a big Easter dinner. <laughs> uh let's see got these questions here too can uh, i have a look at your scrum part? drea says she's struggling to find 100 percent wool yarn that is chunkier thicker than yarn harbor yarn harbor is an awesome store and i'm kind of surprised they didn't actually have it but i know lion's brand makes um a really thick wool just make sure it's 100 percent wool and not super wash i actually modeled my uh scrum sacks after this one did you this this knife is made that by Carl's knife yeah, no. this is made yeah. by an excellent blacksmith, and uh, it's like this is the highlight of human blacksmithing. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> worthy. Like, it was, it's me. <laughs> uh, the ego, of this man, is unbelievable. So, uh, okay. And Decker <laughs> came up with a comment: null binding both ends and lace with a ribbon. Uh, on this one, if you went like this way and laced in the middle, that way you can refill with candy. Good. I have to do that now. I like that idea. I'm gonna. Ideas, because I have lots of time. Um, <laughs> no, I have to, nice blade, Anders, by the way. So it's Heidi. I think I might have read that earlier. Yeah, she, she misses us. Thank we you miss again. you too. Come back soon. Um, 
Let's see. Temperature, temperature. Shaves as close as a blade or your money back. This is from the Australian. What is it? Shaves as close as a blade or your money back. Yeah, you can yeah. put that on your web shop yeah, there, pal. <laughs> yeah, I could actually do that. Uh, I take pride in the, the sharpness of my blades when I send them out. Here's a good question. Dre asks also, does the Viking village or does the village have a Viking kitchen or outdoor kitchen cooking area? We have at least four um, areas where you can make a fire, a fire pit. But actually, if you have a pan uh, cooking bowl pan, I don't know what that's called. Do you know what a bowl pan is in English? Bowl pan? Bowl pan. Well, it's, it's basically a thing to put the coals in or the wood in, and then you can burn it, and it doesn't go through to the ground. Can you burn bread You can put those anywhere as long as there's a fireproof surface underneath. But we actually do have a historical kitchen. Uh, and we hope to use that a bit more, but uh, with pandemic and things, we want to be a little careful when it comes to anything that could be uh, uh, hygienic pandemical. relation. Yeah, pandemical. We don't want to spread anything. No eating of any bats here. Stein Helger says, hello. Uh, Raymond did the math for you. It's 15.7 inches. It's 47. So. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, also said the Erster also means East End Dawn, which is true. Pruda has, says, Baldur's wife Nana is identical to the Mesopotamian goddess Inanna. <laughs> Uh, both mourn their murdered husbands. Oh, yeah. who murdered the husbands? That's what I want to know. Um, by the way, Carl, they said that Anders was a better looking Viking than you, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> he looks, Carl's not bothered. <laughs> yeah. He's also younger. <laughs> Uh, I thought these things smelled bad on Not the much, outside. <laughs> Unprocessed leather, Star Wars, tons, tons. Oh, the uh, movie that we watched. Oh, you had to watch that. They had a Padawan in this one. Viking Legacy. It's on YouTube. Look it up. Ah. <laughs> it's in the description. I'll add you in Do the description really later. It, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make you feel better about your Vikingism. <laughs> okay. Oh, and then there's... Uh, yep. Uh, I see uh, uh, Albert is here as well. So... Thank you for coming. And Bernarda is here, by the way. He says hello from T-shirt warm Tregde. It was warmer here before. I only put this back on now. And has Carl he has a know. Carl has a, a better, better beard. beard. And he do you does. know do you know why Bernarda is saying this? He's sucking up to Carl because it's his brother-in-law. Oh, <laughs> I see. Okay, but I am on overtime, and I have a final exam of a really fun sort in 20 minutes, so I got to go. And if all goes well, we'll have some really good news for you next week. So thank you for playing us, and we're going to leave. Oh, yay, Lyra's vaccinated, and she made it just in time for us to say bye-bye because I can't go over time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful uh, Easter, and uh, thanks for uh, mm -hmm. listening to me ramble about steel, iron, and uh, random history facts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, Peruta. And uh, next week, same time. So Saturday at 6 o'clock. We promise we're not changing our clocks anymore. Yeah, for until the fall. Okay, bye. <laughs> to hit the end.